Christy Call, Editorial Director of Cure Magazine. In this edition of the Speaking Out video series, on behalf of the National Pancreas Foundation, we're talking with Dr. Diane Simeone from the NYU Langone Health Center about early test options for pancreatic cancer. Hi, and welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. So we're talking about early test options today. So what are the current early detection methods that we do have available? So early detection for pancreatic cancer is really a holy grail we have in the field. And as a surgeon, I can tell you that I think that the early detection of pancreatic cancer is really critical for us to really push to have improved survival. Um, it's very tough when patients come in with advanced disease and surgical treatment isn't really even on the table. So we really put a big effort uh, in place and uh, in partnership with the National Pancreas Foundation to try to get information about what are the early detection tests that are out there. Now I will say we currently don't have a perfect early detection test for pancreatic cancer. Um, there are a lot of people uh, that are working on developing and validating an early detection blood test for pancreatic cancer. And I do think based on the number and the high level of those efforts that we're likely to have such a test in the next five years. Um, there are different tests that are looking at circulating uh, tumor cells in the blood, DNA from tumors circulating in the blood. Um, there's another test that's being validated looking at an immune protein signature in the blood. And it might be that one of these tests is, um, uh, comes forward as the best test. Alternatively, it might be a combination of these tests put together um, that work the best. And that is all now being um, uh, evaluated with um, uh, collaborative efforts of research institutions around the country in partnership with a number of foundations and the National Cancer Institute. Importantly, if we develop an early detection blood test where we can pick up a pancreatic cancer, for example, that's a millimeter or two in size, we need to be able to find that tumor. And as a surgeon, if I see a patient who comes with a blood test and says, aha, there's a pancreatic cancer somewhere, but we can't see it on imaging, then our only recourse would be to remove the entire pancreas. So in parallel to developing an early detection blood test, we need to develop more advanced and sophisticated um, modalities to image the pancreas, to be able to pick up that little tiny pancreas cancer. And these are all things that are in evolution, um, but uh, you know, it requires uh, coordination and uh, obviously research funding uh, to help propel uh, those areas of research forward. So currently there's you know, surveillance programs as I guess our method of early detection. What do these surveillance programs currently consist of? So an important um, way to detect pancreatic cancer is to figure out who is at an elevated risk and have sufficient elevated risk that they should be enrolled in a screening program. There, one of the important things that has been in advance is we've been able to develop guidelines that all patients with pancreatic cancer should get germline testing. There's two points of value with that. One is we know now that if someone has a pancreatic cancer that's associated with certain germline mutations and BRCA mutations would be a perfect example, that that actually changes how we treat that patient. It'll drive us to give that patient a different set of therapies than we otherwise would. Second, it helps us identify patients, um, uh, family members, who should also get tested or should be put in a screening program. So really, you know, um, first making sure anybody who's got pancreatic cancer gets tested and we can identify family members at risk. And then secondly, just for doctors to be, um, when they see um, patients in the clinic as part of the routine physical exam, you know, to do a thorough family history of cancer. And if that person has a family history of pancreatic cancer, to get them plugged in at a center that has expertise in that, that has a high-risk clinic uh, and screening, and to really make sure that appropriate patients get screened. And so, um, you know, we often discuss costs associated with cancer care. What are the current costs of early detection screenings? For early detection, 
if um, with screening carried out in appropriate patient population, the cost will be much lower than the cost of identifying patients with advanced disease. Typical screening program is getting imaging of the pancreas annually. That's, that's often done with MRI, a dedicated pancreatic MRI, alternating on a yearly basis with a kind of test called an endoscopic ultrasound or EUS. The two tests are slightly different ways to look at the pancreas, but are complementary. And so someone's in a screening program will get a test once a year where we can look at the pancreas in a detailed manner. And importantly, and we encourage all patients who have family histories of pancreas cancer to be seen at centers that have expertise and that also do research in this area, because the only way we're going to push advances and understand better defining who's at risk, do better risk modeling, identify new pancreatic cancer susceptibility genes, are for individuals at elevated risk to be seen at centers where that kind of activity is taking place. Okay. And so can you also discuss germline testing and its role in early detection? Germline testing is a critical part of uh, screening and testing for individuals at high risk. So to me, it's, a, it's surprising that germline testing is underutilized for patients at high risk. I see it all the time. I see um, individuals who have multiple family members of pancreas cancer that are seen by their doctor and no one has recommended that they get germline testing. Germline testing is a simple blood test that um, is performed where DNA is isolated from the blood and you can test for a battery of cancer susceptibility genes. Right now, we've identified about 15 genes that are associated with um, increased pancreatic cancer risk. There are more to be found, and the cost of these germline tests is relatively low. A high-quality test can be done for as cheaply currently as $250. I'm sure that price will continue to drop. And with the cost so low, we advocate that anyone who has a family history of pancreas cancer, please, you know, seek uh, expert opinion about whether a germline test should be done. Okay. It's interesting, there are a couple of state projects uh, that um, are doing, offering germline testing routinely to the general population to look for cancer susceptibility genes. And I do think that in the future, from a societal perspective, we're gonna go more to that, where germline testing will be offered potentially to all adults if they wish as part of their routine health care. Because if you find a cancer susceptibility gene like a BRCA gene or a mismatch repair gene, that can um, result in a, uh, that person going on a screening program that could change uh, their survival. Um, because with screening, a lot of this can be uh, preventable. Okay, and so I know you had just mentioned um, higher risk, and that's why, you know, germline testing is so important. So there's screening methods for those at an increased risk. But why is that important to know about? It's important to know if you're at increased risk and should be screened, because now we have good data that if you were to develop a pancreatic cancer, if you're in a screening program, the cancer will be found at a much smaller size. The ability for us to resect it um, surgically is much, much higher, many fold higher, such that most patients who are in a screening program that do develop a pancreatic cancer, over 90% of patients can have that tumor surgically resected. And that compares to the average patient who comes into a pancreatic cancer clinic where only 15% of patients who present with a pancreatic cancer can have it resected. So that's a big game changer. So we now have data that if you're in a screening program, the ability for us to remove that tumor uh, with surgery is many fold higher. We are assembling the data now that screening saves lives. And that's where we wanna go. And we wanna make sure that everybody around the country that is at elevated risk knows what that risk is and is in, informed about whether they should be um, involved in a screening program. Okay, and so should we be screening individuals who might be considered average risk? 
So it's important to realize that we're not advocating that everyone get their pancreas screened. We're not advocating screening of the general population. In general, we're advocating screening for people that have two or more family members with pancreas cancer, screening of people that have had a mother and father diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and screening of folks who have um, a mutation that increases their risk of pancreatic cancer, in particular if they have had any family members with pancreas cancer. So individuals who have BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations, ATM mutations, PALB2 mutations, these are some of the more common ones, but there are a set of germline mutations that increase risk of other cancers like breast cancer, colon cancer, and melanoma, and also your risk of pancreas cancer. So we want to make sure people know about those associations and they get plugged in at the right place so they're properly screened. Okay. And so if someone is not at risk for pancreatic cancer, is there any kind of early testing available right now? There is not a universal early detection blood test for pancreatic cancer that's available. There are a number of uh, groups and companies around the country and frankly around the world that are trying to develop an early detection test for pancreatic cancer and cancer in general. Those research efforts are not mature enough um, that there's a test that should be used for the general population. Um, but I expect in the next you know, three to five years that these tests will become available. Um, and obviously, depending on how the test performs, how sensitive and specific it is, that will determine how it should be rolled out as a testing tool. Should it be rolled out just for people who have a family history of pancreas cancer or people who have diabetes and pancreatitis, or should it be rolled out more generally to the population? Okay. And so since right now we don't currently have an early detection test for individuals who are not at risk, but what can they still do, um, you know, to make sure that they understand their risk, um, whether it's, you know, maybe genomic or non-genomic risk factors? Right. So for all my patients, you know, we talk about what are the modifiable risk factors for pancreatic cancer. And these are really important to know about. Smoking. Smoking is probably the biggest risk factor for pancreatic cancer. So no smoking. Heavy drinking. So light social drinking isn't associated with pancreatic cancer risk, but heavy drinking, which is somewhere between two to three drinks a day, can increase one's pancreatic cancer risk. So we really want people to uh, be very careful about alcohol intake. Obesity and diabetes. These are pretty tightly linked with pancreatic cancer risk. In fact, if you look at the rise in pancreatic cancer over the last decade, and look at the rise in type 2 diabetes and obesity, you can almost overlay those curves across the United States. So we really encourage patients, keep the extra weight off and make sure that you get your hemoglobin A1C checked every year by your physician uh, to make sure that you don't develop uh, new onset diabetes. There are other things that we talk to patients about, which I think there's some emerging data exercise. There's new data that really shows that exercise in general is helpful to mitigate cancer risk, not just pancreatic cancer, but frankly, most cancers, um, and eating a healthy diet. Um, these are things that are just in general good for your health, but good for your pancreatic health. Okay. So to kind of help bring it all together, what are you know, the next steps um, in early detection testing? I really think that we're at the cusp of developing an early detection blood test. I fully expect that that will be something available in the clinic in the next five years, whether it's a sensitive or specific enough test to be used for the general population or a more refined population at risk still remains to be determined. We are really pushing for um, improved imaging modalities to find small pancreatic cancers and I think that trying to better um, understand the link between diabetes and who has a new pancreatic cancer is important. 
about two thirds of patients with pancreatic cancer will present with new onset diabetes. Um, we don't have a test that helps differentiate everybody that presents with uh, diabetes, which is a large number of patients versus those who selectively present with a new pancreatic cancer. So if we can develop a test to differentiate those two, all of these things are gonna be game changers to improve survival for pancreatic cancer. Great, well, thank you so much.